Half-Life. Half-Life is one of the most iconic franchises of all time. It stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Halo Shield recharge sound effect. It's so iconic, in fact, that a mere carpentry tool, the crowbar, immediately makes people think of one face. Gordon Freeman, the original Giga Chad. Life truly does imitate art. A game that has influenced the entire FPS genre as a whole. Really the first to bring narrative experiences to shooters, having a more strategic gameplay, and also brought tanks. Is that a rocket turret? That's a rocket turret. Go get him. Go get him. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? Getting demolished by tanks? Oh, oh it's a tank. <laughs> Maybe you want to drive one yourself to get revenge, but... Uh-oh. You are too intellectually inept to know how. Let me introduce you to this video's sponsor. World of Tanks. A massively multiplayer online game where you can drive your own tank to destroy the battlefield. Don't have 10 million dollars for an M1 Abrams? You poor soul. It's okay. In World of Tanks, that M1 Abrams is free. Along with the other 800 plus tanks you can pilot. They got tanks for everyone. Tank destroyers, artillery, light, medium, heavy tanks. Play in whatever style you want. Except on foot, because walking is cringe. Dive right into the enemy, guns blazing. Launch surprise attacks on your opponents, or even hang back from afar, just launching shells from the safety of your hill. Join over a hundred million other Chad tank drivers fighting across over 40 varied battlefield arenas, so you can blow up your enemies with beauty. It's beautiful! All these tanks are historically accurate too, for those science team nerds, making you feel like a real tank commander. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below to sign up and get blasting today! Use code COMBAT to get these super sexy bonuses right here. These are for new players only though, which is, you know, probably you. Thank you World of Tanks for buying my groceries. Anyways, for all the praises I've just sung about Half-Life, I have a confession to make. I've never really played Half-Life. Now look, don't look at me like that, alright? It's not my fault. I mean, the first game came out in 1998, alright? Here's my live reaction to the trailer at the time. I technically have two experiences with Half-Life. First was when I was in third grade, via the orange box at my cousin's house. I played for like an hour, and got bored. Your boy was too busy being a player on the playground to worry about games. Next was when I was in middle school. I remember trying the Ravenholm demo on my grandparents' Mac computer, but it was very scary, and these walking chicken nuggets were horrifying. <laughs> Seriously, just look at these fucking guys. I will never forget that noise. Other than that, I hardly know anything about Half-Life besides these two things. So, years pass. I'm sitting at my computer when suddenly I feel a hand on my shoulder. Play Half-Life. Experience FPS perfection. Also remember to buy TF2 keys. I leaned forward, installed the game, and started playing. Also, I live streamed this entire thing. Eat grenades, bitch. Have another one. Oh. How did that hit? How did that hit me? Oh. What is he doing? What are you doing? What was that? <laughs> And if you want to watch the full playthrough, it's right here on the channel. The Keltown community joined me on the entire thing, which also meant I got fucking gaslit multiple times. Jump in the water? Alright. You guys are saying they jump in the water, but let me, let me save real quick. I feel like you guys are gaslighting me. You! <laughs> I was like, motherfuckers. I was like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, wow, it's, it's, it's knee-high water. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Kill egg for health. This big ass egg? So these eggs right here give me health? <gasps> you lying sack of shit. <laughs> Why? I hate you so much. <laughs> Who said that? Who recommended that? You're getting banned, bro. <laughs> You're getting fucking banned. Thank you all for that. 
let me get some things straight first. I played the OG version of Half-Life. Not Half-Life Source, not Black Mesa. Some people like the newer HD graphics, but I wanted to experience this game in its purest form, and also its hardest form. It was a very pleasant experience, and I highly recommend it. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. So let's start with the first question. What exactly is Half-Life? Oh my god! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> okay, what a fucking entrance. <laughs> Half-Life is an FPS game where you play as Dr. Gordon Freeman, a theoretical physicist who is testing the theoretical physics of bullets slamming into alien flesh. Spoiler alert, they die. But before that, you are running late for work. Oh no. And the insanely long, yet beautiful tram ride you take doesn't help this. Oh, look at them, them graphics. Once you arrive, you don your hazardous environmental suit, or HEV suit for short. You are part of this test where you and the science team gang are getting ready to experiment on this sample that came straight from the Deep Rock Galactic wow. Mining Corporation. We're rich. We're rich. <laughs> Receding hairline here attempts to brief Gordon on these procedures. Although I will admit that the possibility of a resonance cascade scenario is ex But Gordon doesn't need to hear all this. He's a highly trained professional. Unfortunately, due to Gordon being the Giga Chad that he is, he inserts the sample just a little too roughly. Holy shit! Get away from I'm sorry, I'm so strong! No. Oh fuck! Oh, I'm sorry! It's oh. Um, this causes a resonance cascade, opening a portal from our world to another plane of existence, Zen. What the fuck? It's basically like a bridge that connects two dimensions, except that bridge is infested with spiky ball sacks and tentacle monsters. This portal lets all kinds of dangerous, hideous monsters come onto Earth. You, as Gordon Freeman, must use your knowledge of theoretical physics to conduct the grand test of getting the fuck out. I won't go into major spoilers because I still think there's many people who haven't played this game that still should. It's that good, alright? Oh, <laughs> just bounced off his dome, you see that? The story is told in such a unique way that you just don't see often in games anymore. Through a little something called Show Don't Tell. I'm looking at you, Halo Infinite. This quality of storytelling and world building starts as early as the tutorial level. I feel like you can tell a lot about a game from its tutorial level. I can like barely hold onto the gun. Why do scientists need guns? Yeah, what kind of what kind of lab test are we doing here that I need a goddamn SMG, okay? I don't know if I need an SMG to split an atom. Why don't you ask me about chemical bonds, okay? I love when games explain mechanics via world building. It just really sells the universe that much more, as opposed to a menu popping up. Oh snap, we got a chase scene, let's go, I'm ready. What? What? Finally caught up to your bastard, I'm gonna beat you up so bad, uh, oh, oh. Finally, it's time for you to catch these hands, let's go. Take some of that, and that, yeah, that's, oh. Finally, time to have some uninterrupted combat, let's go, bring it, god damn it! This game still slaps, by the way, and you should play it. To help guide you through the tutorial is this very nice hologram lady. Your HEV suit monitors blood oxygen levels, warning you when you need to find an air supply. As you swim through this course, you Here is where I realized how special this game's immersion was. See, in other games, I'm used to just being able to beat the shit out of friendly companions. You know, rough them around a little bit. And usually, they're just fine. Hi, Chief, what do you need? And then there's Half-Life. Lead a security guard into the next room. He will let you back into the transit system. Step you off, must buddy. approach a guard and- <gasps> Oh god, he's actually shooting me back! Oh. Into the next oh. What the fuck? Oh! Oh! Okay. <laughs> okay. I was not expecting that. Oh, oh, oh. oh, shit! Oh, what's up? How you doing? Just another day in the office, am I right? The biggest thing that blew me away in Half-Life is the attention to detail. The entire game is filled with interactable environments and NPC reactions that make this world feel so much more believable. Oh. The environment is way more interactive than I thought. Get away from there, Freeman. I'm expecting an important message. Bro, fuck off! I turned- oh. Usually, if I asked a question, the answer was, yes. I'm sorry if I'm just fucking around. 
No way. Now in the present day, this may seem like very standard things, but one, this game was made in 1998, bro. And two, environments this interactable may not be as standard as you may think. Yo, I'm all. See, Half-Life was made during an era where games were made up of five triangles. So in order to sell immersion, developers had to focus on world interactivity and logic not focusing on being able to see Dr. Kleiner's individual nose hairs. The beginning section alone was just fun to walk around and explore. Stelly Laid Laidlaw's a badass name, I can't even like <laughs> Ain't no way. Dr. Coomer is wild. What do you think he specializes in? Probably urology. Fucking around with things. My god, oh. what are you doing? I'm just making my food, shut up! I like it like this. And also messing with people. This is all Weren't you supposed to be in the tenant chamber half an hour ago? I used to be sniffing my asshole. Press the button under the desk. Oh, okay, hold on. What is this? My God, hey, what are you doing? What? What? Come on, Gordon. You trying to get me into trouble? <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing, dude. Another thing that really helps with immersion is the fact that the entire game, you are always in control, no matter what. If there's dialogue or a set piece, it never rips away control from you to be like, oh wow, look how cool our explosions are. Hey, are you still watching? We paid a lot of money for this, you know. In Half-Life, the story is told in the world. Is he gonna die? Oh, holy shit. Oh my God, he actually saved him. Wow. Not in your face. Dog, your breath stinks. There's only one cinematic that you lose control, and it's when you get fucking jumped and stripped of all your weapons. Any more? Oh, no. Oh. What the fuck? What the fuck? Ah! Oh, I'm getting my ass beat. I see it. You see what? Oh, he pulled down my pants. Yeah, yes, it's massive, I'm sorry. I was born like this. In a world where games are becoming more and more like interactable movies, this was an immense sense of fresh air. It just makes you feel like a real person in this world, and not just a story vessel for fanfiction writers to show off their fetishes. You know, it's kind of funny giving such praises to the game's story when it uses like five NPC models to tell it. We got Dr. Kleiner, Dr. Rosenberg, Dr. Vance, Coomer, and Barry. Now look, I didn't know his name is actually Barney. That is. Yeah, he's, he's an ROTC kid. But my chat just let me call him Barry the entire playthrough, so this is Barry. Along with his many, many identical brothers. No, 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 we have Barry with an E. I'll be happy to survive this with all my parts. Yeah. Yeah, Barry with an E because he's positive and E, you know, positive has an E in it. Then we have Barry with an A for apathetic. No, Barry! With an E, I think. Bye, right, motherfucker. No! Pro tip, aim for the head. Barry! Barry with an I! Oh my god! Come on, Barry, follow me. <laughs> he could have very clearly walked around. It's not murder. It's not murder. <laughs> Barry, no! Barry with the alpha sign for an A. God, no! Is that Barry? Hey, Gordon. Oh my God! No! Barry, you useless piece of shit! Nah, that's Barry with a U for fucking useless. Barry! Make sure you don't. What? What? Make sure you don't what? Barry, no! Barry with- I'm running out of berries. Barry with an O? Bory? Somehow, it just all works. Plus, just going with the fact that this guy is the same as this guy, who is the same as this guy, is just so fucking funny for some reason. He teleported. <laughs> Having story delivered to you only via dialogue from the characters that you find, or the facility's announcement system, further just adds to the immersion factor. Also, the fact that Gordon himself doesn't say a word is so nice, dude. God, I miss silent protagonists. It just makes every thought the player has and every reaction so personal to you. Yeah. <gasps> what the? F Die! Die! Oh. My God, why? For example, 
My Gordon is completely terrified of water. Oh! What the fuck was that? I mean... Oh, hell no. They got fish AI, dude. Got Call of Duty ghosts. <gasps> ah, ah, fuck that. No, no, nope, nope. What the fuck is that? <sighs> Just give me a second. Finally. I have to mention the G-Man. Look, I still don't know too much about him because you really only talked to him once, so I don't have much to say. But my only theory right now is that he got like some sort of Men in Black thing going on, like some protector of the universe. Guess I'll have to play Half-Life 2. But this beautiful storytelling and world building means nothing if the gameplay sucks. Theoretically, because in actuality, the gameplay fucking rules. Okay, look, now he's weak. You guys should be able to finish the job. Come on. Go, my children. Yeah! What a fucking snipe! This is like some next... You piece of sh... Half-Life at the time was at the cutting edge of FPS gunplay. I'm just sorry, it's a prank, bro. It's part of the prank. It's so good, in fact, that even in today's standards, this game was a blast to play. The guns are all unique, punchy, and sound amazing. Almost every weapon also has an alternate function by pressing right click instead of left click, which is dope. For the SMG, it launches an impact grenade. For the shotgun, it fires two shells instead of one, but it has a longer pump time. This laser gun can charge. Oh, that's fucking sick. Causing some pretty massive damage. There are many different alien races that have come through the portal. They know nothing about Earth. Poor things. Luckily for them, Gordon is a highly trained professional and will gladly teach them our ways. Wait, no, come here, come here. I'm trying to teach you something. This is a crowbar. This is a crowbar. This is a crowbar. You know, I think Miyazaki, the creator of Dark Souls, was also a massive Half-Life fan because there are so many bullshit surprise enemy attacks, dude, or just enemies appearing behind you for no reason. See, what kind of Dark Souls shit is that, dude? Is there anything in here that can help me, please? What are you doing corner camping, bro? Dude thinks he's playing fucking Modern Warfare. Oh my god. Honestly, maybe it's the camo. You know, touche. Touche, good sir. Now, I'm not saying this as a negative, because honestly, deep down, I thought it was pretty funny. Also, I'll remind you I was playing on hard, and Half-Life does not take hard lightly. Seriously, look at these god grenade throws. So up, Michael, bitch? <gasps> that, get, get, get down. Oh, no fucking way. <laughs> no way, dude. Okay. We good? <gasps> I think I played about 80% of the game with less than 10 HP. The game even has a follow system for the NPCs, so you can have them follow you to help with combat. Look at him just taking it. Just dodge. Alright. Give you health, or other very helpful things. Wait, can I disarm this now? Or is that just there? Alright, that's fine. Okay, there's, I know there's one up here. Barry! Barry! The overall sandbox of the game is also rolled out to you at a very nice pace and works well with the flow of the story. By far, one of my favorite aspects of Half-Life is the level design, in some cases. I think I gotta time it right, and... Now. Okay, perfect. What is this, dude? I... Oh, pure luck. Never mind, pure... What? What? Let's go for it. Trust the instincts. Trust your instincts, Gordon. What the fuck? Every single environment just feels so real and believable. The entire experience never felt like a video game level. What I mean by this is that some games use like very obvious markings or signs that are very clearly, hey, yoo-hoo, go right here. Half-Life has nearly none of that. There is basically zero hand-holding in this game and Gordon will never say, man, I think I should try breaking that window over there. Oh, and of course they have a water level. It's 1998. 
the year of trauma-inducing water levels. Shout out Ocarina of Time Water Temple. You still give me nightmares. I now understand why Half-Life is in the top 10 of most people's all-time favorite games. It's now also taken a spot in my personal list. I am blown away at not just the fact that this game is a masterpiece, but I'm blown away that in reality, the gaming industry hasn't really evolved that much, at least in terms of mechanics. Sure, games have gotten prettier, but I would even argue that it has regressed in some areas. Half-Life is still more mechanically sound than most games today. Valve has always known how to make a timeless video game, as their track record proves. This alone should let you know that these guys have always been king. Well, almost always. If you like video games, even slightly, you need to play Half-Life. If the graphics bug you that much, then go play Black Mesa. The game looks like an eyegasm. You have no excuses. This game can run on a goddamn calculator. If you made it this far in the video, here's a picture of my dog. He is still very cute. Now do yourself a favor and become enlightened, or else the tax man may just pay you a visit next.